I guess my message almost always is, you know, we're all much more similar than we're different. That's just not women, but men and women. I think we've spent a very long time in the history of humankind emphasising the differences between men and women. It's about bloody time we started emphasising the similarities. So we're talking about brilliant careers. I don't know if mine's been brilliant. It's been weird. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's brilliant. I really started having a second life or a, um, a second win, perhaps you'd call it, at 50. I'm 59 this year and uh, I haven't had, I've never had as much fun as, I, as I've had in the last eight and a half years. Um, it really began with getting picked to go on the Gruen transfer. And that happened because there are hardly any bloody women in advertising. See, sometimes the scarcity works for you. It took me until I was 50 before it worked for me. <laughs> but patience, it may yet. Uh, yeah, they were desperate for women on the panel because what's interesting about what has happened recently, it's nowhere near good enough, but what's interesting is that we can no longer have panels that are all blokes. So now there's a chick spot on every panel. And the interesting thing about being on Gruen was that I hardly ever met the other female panellists because we were never in the same show together. Because apparently if you have more than one chick on a panel, men's penises fall off. <laughs> I don't know what other exploration there can be. They seem very scared of us. In fact, there's a really interesting theory which says that when women get to 30% of representation, some men, I'm pains to say not all men, um, some men start to get panic-stricken and make remarks like women are taking over, this equality thing has gone too far, <laughs> uh, the most oppressed people in our society are white, middle-class male, so that is another problem in that perception is that as soon as, and, and if there's 50% of women, it's terrifying, and if it's like this room, and it's probably, I'm guessing, 90% women, then it becomes literally intimidating. Yet, I don't know about you, I've spent all my working life in rooms where I was the only woman. But that's supposed to be perfectly fine for me. I'm not supposed to be intimidated. I'm supposed to be able to stand up for an entire gender, and if I don't, it's my failure. I haven't done well enough. Uh, and yet, when it's the other way around, we're meant to feel, we're meant to sort of placate. I go to things where there's, you know, it's about women's careers, a bit like this. I speak at a lot of them. This will surprise you. Um, not. And someone will occasionally, before I've had a chance to punch them in the face, get up and congratulate the men for being there. <laughs> no, this may come as a revelation, but we're human beings too. You don't need to be brave to sit in a room with a whole lot of us. It's okay. Nothing bad will happen. I may tease you, <laughs> but if that's the worst thing that happens to you, you're living a pretty good life. 